So when uh, when you're building a Cartesian robot or any other kind of um, device where you're using a servo motor and you want to begin the sequence, you have to home the axis. Um, you can do that in a number of different ways. Some people just manually push push something against uh, against a known position. I like to try to be as accurate as possible. Um, in real life, we use home switches. So there's a proximity switch, picks up a metal target, and when the the axis will creep slowly toward the switch. When the switch is made, it moves away, comes back very, very slowly, zeroes the encoder and the servo motor, and then um, uh, everything else is, is referenced stuff of there. So what we've got here is um, rack and pinion with the uh, the new medium servo motor, and uh, you know this just goes back and forth along here, and I've got a touch switch connected. So the first uh, the first way I want to show you uh, for homing um, is just just as I described, where the axis will come over, touch the switch, move away, and then come back very 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 slowly to try to be as accurate as possible. Zero the encoder, and then move a nominal distance away. In this case, I've set it to 22 and a half degrees, which is exactly four studs. So what you saw there was the high speed move coming over to initially touch the switch, move away, come back very, very, very slowly, and then, and then that 225 degree offset. And th this works very, very well. Um, you will have to use an additional input though, of course, right? Because you need one home switch for, for every axis. So there's another kind of homing called torque homing. And the principle behind it is in modern controls, you can you can watch the amount of torque or, or power that's required for a, a motor to hold a position or, or track along. So the EV3 can sort of do that in a, in a rudimentary way, and I've only been playing around with this for a few minutes. I'm sure there's a better way, but you can one of the, one of the sensor blocks uh, for the rotation is that you can monitor the current power and on any of the motors, and it's it's a bit of a lie. It's not the power that it's give, gonna feed you back, it'll feed you back the speed. So if you tell the motor to move at 10% speed, the value that you get back from that that block is will, will be 10. And if the motor uh, overruns, if it, you know, if you got a, a robot that was say rolling down a hill, that number is gonna creep upward. And if it's, uh, if it's, if it encounters any resistance, that number will fall below a threshold. So we can use that to home by uh, just having a hard stop and have the robot creep toward it and watch the speed and if the speed deviates from our our set speed in this case I'll have it come back at at 10 percent if it falls anything below 8 it knows it's reached an obstruction in this case the hard stop and it'll move away that that 225 uh, degree offset and you know just to kind of give you a an idea of the accuracy here. This is this is four studs, and uh, you know it just it fits perfectly in there. Um, I'm really uh, amazed at the accuracy on this medium motor. It's just an engineering marvel, really. So I think I'm going to make use of torque homing a lot. Um, you know, save a sensor input, and uh, there you go. Just some ideas for you on uh, Cartesian robots with uh, the new Lego Mindstorms EV3.